celebrating all things cool in Jacksonville. A local show with a spotlight on the 904. With hosts Eden Kendall and Mark Payton. Featuring amazing stories from every neighborhood with Rance Adams. This is River City Live. Welcome to River City Live. We don't have an eclipse to share with you today. The fond memories of some clouds and lots of, but, but some really great video in places that were in the totality zone. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, News for Jacks did an awesome job covering yeah. that from across the nation. It kind of made me feel a little bit worse about our situation here when you saw some of the places like Southern Illinois where it came through and it totally blacked out the sky. Mm. And here we just South use, Carolina. Yeah, South Carolina. You know, not too far away. It looked beautiful here. Not so much. It's still cool though. We had uh, a couple pairs of glasses that we were passing around in the parking lot, and for there, there were uh, there was like maybe a minute where you could see a little little something, and I but I think it was still cool. But I feel like we had plenty of warning to to know that we could go places if it, we really wanted to see it in its totality. It was good bonding in the parking lot. But you remember last yesterday we were talking about date nights and you know the build up and all that. <laughs> and I said yesterday that are we building this up for failure? You and did. so so I was thinking of you know making a correlation. Date night, you build it up, and it's so exciting, and you're going to have a great night. And we were talking about in sur Searcher. Well, Ranch, don't go through with this thought. <laughs> you can always do this. You get yourself in a bind, and you're going to say something you shouldn't. Your wife's at home. We're going to stop. Just, yeah. That's just really I, I, this know, wasn't just me, I don't know where this is going to go, but it, you're not setting it up in a way where it's going to end in a good way. Right? I have to agree with Mark here. There, it, let's just, just say there wasn't the follow-through that no, we expected. Yeah, let's be optimistic. But again. <laughs> There's nothing to do with <laughs> So in <laughs> twenty in twenty twenty four, the next eclipse will come here and we could see it from the United States. And you might be off the couch by then. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <You're> yeah. Like, <laughs> we were in the parking lot, a handful of us, and um, my husband and the girl child were home and they were watching on TV. Well, they went outside and tried to see what they could see, and they were watching Channel 4, and I got a text from my daughter saying, are you in the parking lot? <laughs> because I guess Joy Purdy was out there, oh, and I think right. they panned over and showed all of us in the parking lot looking up. So we made the news if that way. I would have known that we were actually on camera. I think I would have behaved a little more <laughs> and been more into the moment but of looking at the clouds. <laughs> we hope your experience was great and that you did get to see a little bit of something interesting and that you did see some great coverage. I mean, we had folks all over the country mm -hmm. watching for you. I know Rebecca Berry was very affected by it. She was just well, that was part right of things there. I was taken back from. When you go on Facebook and you see all these like live streams of everybody that were like so emotional about it. Some people yeah. were in tears. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, oh, now I really feel chippy about <laughs> this. Yeah, you know, for the next one, which is, uh, you just said the date. How many? 2024. 2024. Yeah, you'll know for the next one. So. Yeah, maybe, maybe make that, that trip wherever oh, you can I, see it. I feel like I will now know from the next one. That's, I feel like now I would actually make a journey to go see it now that I see what you miss if you don't. It's supposed to be um, prevalent here, like St. Augustine right here. So, boom, we're here. Yeah, I'm here ready. Here we are, here we are. Uh, now, the kids, there was a big thing yesterday. Did they go to school? Did they not go to school? Uh, I, I feel like, you know, with a girl child, most of them didn't miss that much. She said that she heard back from some friends and there was, like, not a lot covered. But while we're on the subject, subject of kids... Your personalities play a big role. They most certainly do. So there was a study that just came out in the last couple of weeks about what traits a mom would want their kids to have. And the number one on the list, beating out intelligence, was having a big personality. Being intelligent was maybe in the top 10%, maybe. Maybe. Isn't that crazy? So personalities are really important. And a big part of it is if you have a personality, I guess moms think that your life at school will be a little bit easier. You're going to have friends. You don't have to worry about your kids in the social setting. And I could kind of relate to that, right? You want your kids to be happy mm -hmm. more than anything else. And the whole study, it was helping the values and how as parents we shape our kids with the values we perceive and we want them to have. Mm -hmm. So isn't it interesting? Number one, like where are you? At I'm you right on in? with that because I, I always say I want my kids to be happy. You know, when you see somebody with a good personality, they usually exude some happiness, some joy. I have family members that are considered to be brilliant. I didn't get those genes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they don't seem that happy. That's true. Yeah. Maybe High, they know really too much. Really highly intelligent people. 
they kind of be more of an introvert, which is the exact opposite of what the moms wanted in this study. Uh -huh. They wanted that extrovert. Let me ask you a question now. Is there a point, though, where your kid is too much of the extrovert, oh. too much of the life of the party, <laughs> where you're like, huh, let's rein this in. Too and much, yo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, being the brilliant person that I am, I, it's <laughs> definitely hindered me as I've expanded into this career path. What am I talking about? Nothing, uh, I guess. <laughs> No, but I think that's cool because, uh, I mean, you, like you say, you want your kids to be happy. And sure. the super smart kids, they're happy in their own way. But, I mean, in school, it's all about the social setting. And, right. and especially these days with bullying on so many levels, a kid with a personality that can handle that, make friends, and, you know, kind of find a core group of support, you know, you want them to have that. I feel like, too, when we were growing up, IQ and just regurgitating what you learned on a test was big. And now you have words like emotional intelligence that's really, you know, important to have that you could read other people. Mm -hmm. And that I think you got to put a lot of stock in, especially as a lot of people are just on the computer and they're not having conversations, they're not having that interaction. So I do think it's a really important trait. You know what? Speaking of that, how many teens don't ever pick up a phone and have a conversation? And there's a dad that has created an app to make sure that he at least gets a response from his kids. Well, like the other week you were talking about, you would uh, have your kids send you selfies so you knew exactly where they were, where they were. And you know kids today like, oh, well, I didn't have a signal or whatever. <laughs> and we know how that rolls. So this dad, uh, Nick Herbert, came up with an idea where with an app where it would block his son's phone from any kind of activity until he replied back to his dad's text, which is genius. So what, basically, if an alarm sounds and the screen is blocked with a message, so his son would go, oh, I guess I need to reply or I'm not gonna be able to go Pokemon Go or, you know. So he locks him up, so yeah. he's gotta reply to his dad. The problem is, he created this app and it's Android based. Okay. His son has an iPhone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so he's going to have to work out those yeah, so schematics. So he'll work for that get platform. Your phone, get your son a new phone. You just created a brilliant app. You can probably afford it. That's brilliant. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant. The, uh, the girl child always responds. Yeah. The teen boy. Man, he never responds. And he always tries to blame it on iMessage, and it's the, I don't get your texts, I get them way later. I, I was like, mm, how come you're the only one in the family that doesn't get my texts? <laughs> well, Is he still on, like, uh, your plan, the family plan? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, suggest, I suggest you look into this. <laughs> <laughs> and then, because, like, um, basically, it's a screen that overtakes his screen. Mm -hmm. So it should just be a yeah. picture of you, like, <laughs> Call me. <Hey. laughs> okay. Otherwise, you can't even do anything else on the phone. Yeah. I love it. That's you a don't great want idea. me. Oh, surfing. You don't want my phone. I can't have my phone. Well, you know what? I know that it's impossible physically for you to be in that ocean for more than mm, an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you could have responded. But that's personal stuff. He's. He's on his way back to college now, so. Oh, so he can't see this to defend himself. No, no, We'll no. send him a link. <laughs> you know what, though? Um, the other day, I was shocked because he actually, he doesn't comment on Facebook, and I'm not even friends with him on Facebook. I sent him a request. I'm not going to insist on it because I know he doesn't care about Facebook. He, he's a teenager. They don't do Facebook, and more on that in just a second. But you know what he does with Facebook all the time? He screenshots things and sends them to us. So he's on Facebook lurking around to make fun of his parents. So like he'll screen something, <laughs> screenshot. My husband checked into the gym, which I guess he thought was really dorky. So he screenshots that and sends it to us last night. Like, really? Really? <laughs> so they're all on Instagram. I think um, I personally wasn't surprised at all to see this research that says that of the 14 and a half million people aged 12 to 17, um, m a lot of them are going to drop off of Facebook. Totally. The ones that are I using see that it right now. now. So when I was on vacation, I went up north to visit my family. I have a lot of younger nieces. And I was asking them, so what are you guys into social media? None of them were into Facebook. Instagram and Snapchat. Yeah. That was it. That's and it. it's funny because whenever they do text each other, it is all in code. It's pictures, emoji, that's like they don't even write anymore, mm. or type anymore, or anything. So I totally see this trend happening. And to me, once, when Facebook came out and you figure it was kind of like the older millennials and you know, Gen Xers mm -hmm. that were on it. Once we started sharing our, our kids, our grandkids, yeah. checking into the gyms, <laughs> they were designed for that. It, it, it lost its cool points and everybody's, the young kids are not even getting into it as a study suggests. So it's just a matter of time before it's just, 
She says, yeah. oh, people on there. Oh, oh whippersnapper. We suspected it, but now the research really does back it up if you're trying to. Uh... So, in other words, it's safe to post all that stuff about your kids again. Well, well, you know, it's funny, too. When Mark Zuckerberg came out with this, it was never about posting your kids' first day of school, you know, which right. Chase starts preschool, so check it out on my Facebook page. <laughs> you know, it was about never college. about college. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But, I mean, Facebook has turned into, like you said, they, kids are writing in code now, and now they're like, I'm not typing anything. And Facebook, even though you put pictures and videos right. up there, it was more about making commentary and yeah. connecting like that. And now they're just like, I just want to get... Keep, post a picture and keep it moving. Well, here's there's 2 billion users right now on Facebook, so it makes you wonder, will it ever go away? Ah. Uh, you know, will there be a new, a, a new quote-unquote mousetrap out there that will get everybody to go on to it? Yeah. I know? mean, even my Instagram, I always had it share over to my Facebook. Yeah, that's it. Because yeah. I have so many friends that I that aren't over, over on Instagram yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love Instagram. What is this Instagram? Hashtag Mark Payton <laughs> needs yeah. IG. So, um... I know I'm painting this not so great picture of my son. I hate when I do that. I just wish I <laughs> But he did ask me, but he's he's a he's a comedian. He asked me the other night, he truly did ask me this, and then this story came up today. Uh, when, so when do you think you peaked? Wow. <laughs> what do you say when someone says that? So when do you think you peaked? Well, there is research that's come out saying that there are different things in which we peak Yeah, so at Business times. Insider, they plotted this study, and here's a picture of it. And it's really cool because it shows the different trends of when we peak at certain things, right? So for example, learning a second language, when it's the easiest for you, it's when you're seven and eight years old. So that is long gone for us guys. No. Mm, it's um, hard to learn. Brain obviously. processing power you peak at 18 and you could go through here and just like look at the different trends but one thing that's cool is you don't it's not like your life's over at 30 or 35 right. there are some things that it's well into your 60s your 70s or your 80s you really start to peak that I think is so cool you know like I, uh, psychological well-being peaks at, at about 82 hmm. so when you're wow. totally happy with who you are and your surroundings 82. <laughs> so this one is interesting to me. Men and women feel best about their bodies after 70. I feel like it should be sooner. We're going to have to talk to Dr. Foss. Yeah. yeah. About that. I like. Make, see if we can move <laughs> that down a little bit. I feel like uh, your understanding of other people's emotions peaks in your 40s and 50s. And I wonder if that's like when people really, you know, just don't care anymore because you get talk about older generations they get it's like they just say what they feel you know kind of yeah. reverting to like kids oh, ages totally, yeah. and then after a while they're just like your feelings are hurt i don't care yeah. whatever this one's kind of sad women are most attractive to men at about 23. so according to the way we perceive <laughs> beauty it peaks at 23. that's kind of sad yeah and then it says as men's attractiveness to women seems to get better with age according to this chart so I think, what was this yeah yeah who did the study? <laughs> I, I understand. Man, I understand. Yeah. Guys. So <laughs> but so I do think it's it's cool though how again it's not like once you hit a certain age everything's downhill. You peak with a lot of different things, mm -hmm. and it seems like you just start to become more happier with age, which.